We are currently fighting a war against a simple yeast known as Candida ores, and we're losing. A cousin of the yeast that we use to make bread and beer is actually killing thousands of patients. To illustrate this severity, we can look to a hospital in London, which had to close their intensive care unit for 11 days because of an outbreak of Candida ores. So how do we deal with a threat this severe? First, we have to understand how we get sick from Candida ores. It enters through our blood and causes multiple organ failure. Traditionally, to treat bloodstream infections, we would use antifungal drugs as our weapon of choice. These are a lot like heat-seeking missiles. But there is an issue here. You see, fungi are actually incredibly similar to humans. So whenever we use antifungals, we risk targeting ourselves as well. So guess how many drugs are actually safe enough for us to use against bloodstream fungal infections? The answer is just three. My research has focused so far on why these three drugs have been ineffective at stopping Candida ores. Candida ores is known as a superbug, or an organism which can resist multiple different types of drugs. In fact, a study has shown that half of all Candida ores isolates are resistant to two or all of the three drugs that are available to treat it. My research has provided a major mechanism for how it does so. You see, Candida ores is a lot like those advanced aircraft that you see in the movies. When a heat-seeking missile is fired against the aircraft, they can produce decoy flares, which trick the missile into targeting the flares rather than the aircraft itself. Similarly, Candida ores can produce these things known as extracellular vesicles, which are composed of the same material as the cell itself. This tricks the antifungals into targeting the extracellular vesicles rather than the cell. And we think this is a major contributor to why antifungals have worked poorly in the body so far. But now that we know this mechanism, can we act upon it? And the answer is absolutely. So if there was some way for us to remove this decoy mechanism, could we restore the effectiveness of the drugs? We tried doing that exactly. We added an EV inhibitor drug, which prevented the superbug from producing these decoys. And guess what? The drugs worked once again. We think this research will help us give clinicians extra opportunities to use drugs which were previously ineffective and hopefully save a lot of lives. Thank you.